Representative Ruben Cahuen is a freshman congressman representing Nevada's 4th district. Now, had I been able to vote in this district, I probably would have voted for him as well because on the campaign trail, he stated his belief that healthcare is a basic human right, and once he was elected, he quickly became a member of the Congressional Progressive Caucus. So, seemingly, this guy is an ally. However, one thing he hasn't done since he's been elected is co-sponsor H.R. 676 like the rest of his colleagues in the Congressional Progressive Caucus. Now, this is strange, given what he said on the campaign trail. So, he recently held a town hall back in his district, and his constituents showed up to ask him why he has yet to co-sponsor H.R. 676. Because if you claim that healthcare is a basic human right, then there's no better way to prove that than by co-sponsoring this bill that would guarantee healthcare to every single citizen. So one of his constituents named Amy showed up to tell her story and explain why Medicare for All is so important. This is what she had to say. I have stood and told the death of my daughter's story on TV. I have told it, I have organized rallies. I have gone to foreign news press conferences. I have did a, a joint press release with Dina Titus to fight the HCA. I have done this every time I tell that story. Sorry, it's Mother's Day. It tears a scab off of my heart. They told her, the first thing they asked her was, do you have insurance? And my daughter said, no, her fate was sealed. I was out of town on business, otherwise I'd been there advocating for her. My daughter begged and begged, and she called me crying and not helping me, and begged for something for the pain and some diagnostic testing so they could discover what was wrong with her leg. They specifically, they kept on telling you can leave now, it won't cost you anything, there's the door. She kept on begging anyway. I was on the phone with her when they told her specifically, go get insurance and see a specialist. We're not a doctor's office. If insurance did not matter in her, her treatment and care, my daughter would still be alive. And I am speaking as a dual insured person. I am speaking out for everyone else here. My daughter died because she did not have insurance. I had to do what no mother had to do. My daughter died in my arms from pulmonary embolism from a blood clot that was in her leg that would have cost a thousand dollars to diagnose. I had to go and pick out a new shirt for her because the incisions from her organ donation were so high up on her collarbone that she couldn't wear her normal clothing. They had to pull me away from her casket because I was screaming and crying because I knew that was the last moment that I was going to touch my daughter or ever see her alive again. And all I have left is this hair in my hand. That's the only thing I have left of my daughter after 22 years. And I'm just before you now. I'm also a CFO. I know what you're up against. I know what the bill calls for. I know it calls for companies to go nonprofit. I get it. I understand completely. I know that bill like the back of my hand, HR 676. I know it well, and I know what you're against. But we won't have a path forward if we don't get our Democrats online. It's going to be the litmus test. If we don't get you guys online and get on board to make a path for us and show the rest of the country that there's people that are going to stand up, that are going to be there for you to, to Medicare for all, if you don't jump on board with your, with your code, your, um, the, the rest of your progressive caucus and become a co-sponsor, more and more people are going to die. This is under the ACA that this happened. And I stand up because like you, I don't want anybody else to die. I don't want anybody else without insurance and I will stand up for anyone on ACA and I will share my daughter's story with pride to protect the ACA. But it didn't save her. It didn't save her. She's an example of what happens if they go to the AHCA. Please, I'm begging you. Please, be a hard runner on it. It's the cross party lines. It's been 60% of Americans are approving it. They even have Republicans coming out now. And I'm sorry if I'm so emotional with this, but one death, if it's your daughter, if you can imagine if your mother lost you, one death is one too many. And please. So what happened to Amy's daughter is something that should never happen. It wouldn't have happened in Canada, it wouldn't have happened in the United Kingdom, and it wouldn't even happen in Saudi Arabia. However, the United States is unique in that unlike other modern industrialized nations, 
we're the only country that doesn't guarantee healthcare as a right. So I want to reiterate something that Amy said. She said, one death is one too many. And, you know, I don't think I've ever heard a more poignant statement ever. Because as someone who lived through the death of their child, no parent should ever have to bury their child. But I don't know how after hearing her story, anyone with a heart can come out against Medicare for all. However, after sharing her story and breaking down in front of her congressman, who is a member of the Congressional Progressive Caucus, Ruben Kehuen still told her basically, the answer is no. Well, thank you for sharing that story, and I, I'm very sorry for your loss. Um, I can't even imagine the pain that you're going through, or that you went through. Uh, for me, it's not that I oppose uh, HR 676, or that I'm against it. Uh, for me right now, it is of utmost importance of spending every bit of energy that I have to protect what we have right now in place. And, and again, every year. And, and, and I say this, and I say you this have because to start somewhere you've because got to start building that coalition. A, 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 a few, a few weeks ago. Less. Now, I am so grateful that for everything you're doing every day, I am doing what you're doing in Congress. I can't do it at the grassroots level anymore. This is as grassroots as I can get right now. And also, not going to work. We're not asking you to take off. It's not to the point of being passed. Let's be real. We just want your name on the co-sponsor list. That's all we want. So, and look, and I came here to listen to you as well. I came to listen to your stories. I came to listen why you support it. Again, I'm not sitting here opposing it. I'm not here telling you that you know this is the worst bill in the world. Um, you know, I'm not bought and paid for by anyone. So, what you just watched was a sitting congressman look a grieving mother in the face and tell her, no, I will not co-sponsor HR 676. And let's think about really what she's asking him to do. That's it. Sign your name. That's it. It'll take two seconds and then you're done. You could show us that you are on the side of people like Amy who lost her daughter because America does not have a single payer healthcare system. The Affordable Care Act expanded coverage to many, but Lots of people are still left out, including Amy's daughter. But that congressman heard her story, looked her in the eye, and said no, basically. He gave her a bullshit answer. And as you saw in the video, uh, <laughs> they started to push back, and rightfully so. But that's not where this story ends, because his constituents completely put him in his place. Because what he said is inexcusable, because one of his colleagues, Dina Titus, she did co-sponsor HR 676, and she's still fighting against the AHCA. So there's no reason why you can't do both, and this is what his constituents told him. Right now, we get the Affordable Care Act repeal. If they get the 51 votes, forget about Medicare for all. How about Medicare for no one? That's what we're faced with right now. That's just it, 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 24 million people are gonna miss their health coverage. Mm -hmm. 24 I'm sorry, million that's people. an excuse. Well, well, we we're, we're, we're not, we're not asking you to. I mean, look, and I'm saying, let, let, let's, let's protect the Affordable Care Act right now. I, okay. I, 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 and, 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 and I, I promise you, I, I promise you, I give you my word right now, you all hear, you know, you see it on social media. I will be the first, as soon as we defeat that in the Senate, I will come back here, we'll do a round table, we'll talk about this and we'll strategize on how to move forward with, so everybody has to co-sponsor it now. Because I am focused my entire energy it right now. So 50%, over 50% of Democratic Congress people have already co-sponsored it. Over 50%. Most of your caucus. Most 108 already in county. If Gina Titus have done it. You can see, all you got to do is put your name on the bill and then go fight against the AHCA. Go fight against, uh, you know, Trump care. But all you got to do is walk over to John Conyers desk and say, I'll let you put my name on the bill. And then that bill might come in 2020 when we have a majority. So right now, it's not even going to come on the floor yet. But just co-sponsor it, join the majority because that is the future that should be on the democratic platform. Yes, let's not go backwards against the ACA. Let's not go backwards with Trump care because, because it's going to add more people to uninsured. But, uh, but the thing is that ACA leaves 30 million people uninsured on average. And the ACA will leave 50 million. It will add 20 more or so, 24 more, whatever the numbers. So how come having 50 million uninsured is horrible, which it is, but having 30 million is okay? So yes. Let's not go backwards, but let's go to zero.
you know. So oh, it doesn't hurt to put a name on the bill. That's not a good excuse. I, I, I love everything you said so far. I think you're great. No, the politician, Dina Titus co-sponsored it. The majority of Congress people in the Democratic Party have co-sponsored it. A new poll came out but from Harvard. 75% of Democrats approve of H.R. 676, single-payer Medicare for all. 46% of Republicans approve. 30% of Republicans disapprove. More Republicans approve than disapprove. ACA it was a good step forward, but it's not the ultimate solution. It does have a lot of flaws, like having 30 million people unimproved, uh, uninsured, and 45,000 Americans die every year, including my stepdaughter, Shilin. My wife right now is a shell of a person. Every morning, she can't even barely living. And that's what else on the ACA. So I understand. Let's fight against ACA. That's a horrible, inhumane bill. I understand that. But you can do both. I do not buy that excuse that you and other Democrats have used. And then another thing, too, if you guys go for Medicare for All, you will win. You win in 2018, you win in 2020, you will win. Use that as your championship, and you will win. There are so many Republicans that want H.R. 676. Even if they don't even fully understand what even that number and letters mean, they want universal health care. This is a nonpartisan thing that everybody wants. And I understand being a freshman, I understand the fire you are under, but you need to help us, please, please. So that right there is exactly what you do to hold your elected officials accountable. That was, that was great because they responded with facts. They responded with public opinion polls and they made it so that way, if you don't agree with them, if you don't agree with the facts, then you're unreasonable. And we shouldn't have to be putting this level of pressure on someone who's an ally. Again, this guy is a member of the Congressional Progressive Caucus. So there's no reason why he didn't co-sponsor H.R. 76 on day one. But yet, he's unwilling to do that. Now, I want to say something about the guy in the video who you heard, who basically put him in his place. His name is David, and that's not the first time he stood up to fight for what's right. So he actually confronted Senator Catherine Cortez Masto at an earlier town hall that I covered on the show. And him and his wife, who lost their daughter have been strong allies in the fight for Medicare for All. And I've been in contact with them for a while now. And I will be sharing their daughter's story on the podcast. And every time I hear one of them tell their story, and every time I see them confront a congressman or congresswoman about their lack of support for H.R. 676, it encourages me to continue fighting. Because if they can fight after dealing with what they went through which, again, no parent should ever have to go through, then there's no excuse for any of us. They went through the unimaginable nightmare situation, and I don't even know how to explain it as anything other than a nightmare that you can't wake up from. And they're still fighting. So whenever you feel discouraged, think about David and Amy and what they went through and how they're still not backing down and they're still willing to fight, not just for them, not just so that way they can get justice for their daughter, but fight for something that benefits all of us. Now, after Representative Ruben Kehuen was confronted, he still basically said no, and his constituents literally begged him and pleaded with him to co-sponsor H.R. 676. That didn't move him. I am not here ignoring your suggestions. Um, I, I could have simply said no to this. I could have simply said no to this and, and gone about my day and enjoyed my Saturday. But I know this is important, and that is why I'm here, and I am listening to you. But all I'm saying is, and, 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 and I hope you understand, this is not that I oppose your, the bill. This is not that I oppose the effort that you're making. As a matter of fact, I am grateful that you're making this effort. But right now, again, we're one or two votes away from getting the Affordable Care Act repealed in the Senate. You're not in the Senate. And I really hope, I really hope that every tweet, Facebook, email, and, and call that you're making is not to my office that it is to Dean Heller's office to make sure that he votes against repealing the Affordable Care Act. I don't have to tell you guys, because if you're watching the show, you're already progressive. You know that his answer was a complete cop-out, and what he said was inexcusable, and he even had the nerve to say, I hope you're not calling me. I hope you're calling people like Dean Heller. Well, <laughs> unlike Representative Ruben Cohen, we're actually capable of multitasking. So yes, we can hold Dean Heller accountable, but we can also hold 
Ruben Cohen accountable as well. So you know exactly what we're going to do. We're going to call Ruben and ask him why he refuses to listen to his constituents. His number is 202-225-9894. Ruben Kibler is not available. Record your message after the tone. When you've finished, you can hang up or press 1 for more options. Hello, Representative Kehwen. My name is Mike Figueredo, and I'm a little bit puzzled because you're a member of the Congressional Progressive Caucus. You also campaigned on the idea that healthcare is a basic human right. Yet, when I look up Bill HR 676, I don't see your name. So I'm wondering why you have yet to co sponsor this bill. Now, at a recent town hall, I saw how you looked a grieving mother in the face and said no because we have to fight for the ACA, so we can't even propose an alternative to what the Republicans are doing. And I just wanted to call to let you know that your excuse is not acceptable, and your answer was a cop-out. And let me just tell you this, if you are not willing to co-sponsor HR 676, we will be primarying you, you will be voted out of office, and even though you just were sworn in, you will be losing your job, because if you're not in favor of Medicare for All, then you're against us. Again, if you are not with us, you are against us on this issue because this is non-negotiable. All you have to do is take 10 seconds of your time, if even that, sign your name on John Conyers' bill, H.R. 676, and that's it. That's all you have to do to show us that you are with us. However, you are deciding to be a coward by neglecting the will of your constituents, and I will be doing everything I can to pour money into the campaign of your primary challenger in 2018 if you do not co-sponsor H.R. 676. Grassroots activists are not willing to back down. Get on board or get out of Congress because it's time that you stand up for what's right and stop being a coward like every other one of the Democrats in Congress. Thank you. Co-sponsor it. This is not negotiable. So, out of all the congressmen that I've seen tell their constituents no, this is probably the one that's the worst to me. Not only because he heard the story that Amy shared with him, that she was courageous enough to share with him, but because he's a member of the Congressional Progressive Caucus. Why do we have to put this much pressure on you if you consider yourself to be a progressive? Ruben is not a progressive. He's not our ally. And with friends like him, who needs enemies? So please give him a call. Amy and her husband were kind enough to fight for us. Let's fight for them now. Let's call Ruben up and tell him to do the right thing. Support this podcast by joining the independent progressive media revolution today at humanistreport.com.